This game contains content might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. Damn, damn, damn! Why didn't he start pouring now? On the very day that you didn't have enough money for a taxi? You run as fast as you can. Using your arms as a very poor shield against the vicious rain. It's like the sea is being emptied over your head. This isn't going to work. You're getting soaked. You're gonna have to find shelter and wait until the rain stops if you don't want to catch the cold. The flower shop ahead of you is displaying a very obvious open sign on its window. That'll do. You push the door open and rush inside. The pleasant smell of flower perfume hits you as you let the door close behind you and pat at your wet hair. Yeah, it's already drenched, but you still have one layer of clothing beneath your coat that remains dry. A small sigh escapes you as you look around. A large variety of plants surround you, from colorful roses to potted little succulents. At least you ended up in a nice shop. Pretty bad weather today, huh? Your attention shifts to the register a little further ahead. A boy with blonde hair is standing behind it. He gives you a shy little smile. Oh, hey. Yeah, sorry for bursting in like that. I was just trying to find some shelter. It's really no trouble. Feel free to look around while you're here. His smile becomes a little wider. More suitable for customer service. Uh, now that you're taking a good look at him, he's pretty cute. You don't care much for his looks. Eh, he's pretty cute. You begin to scan the flowers on display. The arrangements aren't half bad. Some of them you haven't even seen anywhere else. You'd often walk past this place on your way to work, but you never took the time to come inside. Perhaps it wouldn't hurt to get a small pot of plant. It could liven your apartment a little. Hey, um... Uh, you glance at the employee's chest, where his name is displayed. Keith, I might get a pot of plant, but I'm not sure what to pick. Have you got any recommendations? Maybe something that won't die so easily. His eyes light up immediately. Of course, a few good options would be succulents, uh, such as aloe vera. Peace lilies are also nice if you want to get something a little less spiky. And spider plants are another popular option for beginners. He points to each plant as he speaks their names. Then he proceeds to explain how to take care of them. If he looked a little timid before, all of that is now gone. You knew employees were supposed to be kind and helpful, but Keith seemed genuinely passionate about the subject. He practically radiated happiness when he spoke about plants. Aloe vera, peace lily, spider plant, I will get the spider plant. You tell Keith your choice and he happily nods in agreement. Have you had trouble in taking care of plants before? I can give you tips on other species too if you like. Yeah, a little bit. Thanks for the offer. Yeah, I'll just look after this one for now, but if it's any success, I'll come by for more. My place does look a bit dull without any plants. By the time you pay for your plant, the rain has stopped. Keith hands you your new plant and you're about to turn and leave. Ah, uh, be hi. I will ask for his number. I ask for his num- I ask for his number. Why not? Before you do so, you decide to try your luck with a cute florist. Hey, uh, this might sound kind of sudden. Don't feel pressure to agree or anything, but could I get your number? A small blush spreads across his cheeks. It makes him look even more adorable. Oh, I'm flattered. His expression turns from flustered to sad as he avoids your gaze. Don't take this the wrong way. I, I think you're good looking and you seem like a nice person, but having my number wouldn't be a very good idea. That's a weird way to reject someone. It is a little disheartening, but you don't want to pressure him. Yeah, that's fine then. Thanks for the help with the plants. And have a nice day. You offer a smile to let him know you weren't mad and wouldn't hold a grudge. The timid smile from before returns to his face. You too. You don't waste any more time in case the rain starts again. Better get home fast. But as you exit the shop, you suddenly feel a chill spread through your body. Is it because your hair got soaked? No. You feel odd. Through the shop's window, you see Keith. He's staring right back at you. But something about him is different from before. His smile isn't there and his eyes look off somehow. Maybe you're just imagining things. It's a little... It's a little far to properly see his expression. It was very sweet to you earlier. You shouldn't think ill of him like this. You shake away the thoughts and continue your walk home. Date one. This is different. The next day, you're headed to work on the same route you always take. The sky is a dull gray and the air is chilly, which makes you glad you dressed a little warmer this morning. 
Perhaps that's why the streets are empty. This time, you made sure to take an umbrella with you. You stop at a crosswalk waiting for a green light. As you do so, you notice someone on the other side of the street. Normally, you wouldn't pay the stranger any mind, but something catches your eye. Does he have blue spots on his face? Is it bruises? Perhaps makeup. They look a bit too bright to be bruises. The lights turn green and you begin to cross the road. So does the other person. As he grows closer, you find yourself unable to look away. The blue spots aren't the only unusual thing about him. His eyes are large, frozen in a sort of widened look. One side of his mouth stretches up to his cheek in a squiggly line, creating an uneven smirk. His eyebrows are curved upwards, as if he were in pain. He notices you staring and grins, just as the two of you pass each other. You could swear you see sharp teeth for a split second. A familiar chill runs down your spine. Just a cosplayer, you tell yourself. A very convincing one. But strangely enough, you can't help but feel like you've seen him before. That's odd. Someone with a face like that wouldn't be easy to forget. Maybe you've seen him somewhere without all that makeup. You eventually arrive at your workplace and forget about the strange person for the rest of the day, choosing to focus on your work instead. I mean, it's not a very eventful day. You received a few calls, but nothing too stressful or complicated. Your annoying colleague, Jacob, who works at a desk near yours, goes on and on about some party he wanted you to attend and why you should have. You try to tune him out and enjoy the slow day. Several hours later, you're standing in the elevator, tired and ready to head home for a well-deserved rest. You say goodbye to a few co-workers on your way out. As you exit the building, you find someone leaning against the wall by the entrance, arms crossed. Is it? Uh, you don't have your arms crossed! Hey, hey! What are you doing out here? It's the guy you saw on the crosswalk. The grin he gives you is, a, is just as creepy as the one from earlier today. Did he follow you to work? For how long has he been standing there waiting? Oh, so how can I, how can I mistake this for him, like, crossing his arms? Like, this is very different from that. Okay. Ella has been waiting there. He's looking at you as if he's expecting something. Can I help you? Sure you can. You can give me your number. Uh, yeah, why, yep, yeah, sure, why not? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna question this. I'm not gonna question this. I have gone through this route before. I know it's gonna lead to a bad end. Whatever. Okay. You pull out a pen. Is it okay if I write it on the back of your hand? His smirk fades, and he looks at you as if you just told him you have a horse in your pocket. Wait, really? You nod. It looks, it looks like it's taking him a minute to process this. Eventually, he holds out his hand so you can write the number on the back of it. You notice that the blue spots are present on his hands as well, and the blue parts of his skin don't smudge as you touch them. Is it not paint after all? The guy stared at his hands as if pondering what to do now. You just did it so I'd leave you be, didn't you? No, you actually find him weirdly attractive. You should shut up and be grateful you bother with his ugly butt. I find him weirdly attractive. I think you look cool. Your boldness only stuns him further. Since it doesn't seem like there'll be further interaction between the two of you, you leave him to his disbelief and continue your walk home. You get home and unlock your door. The apartment is just as you left it. Except for one small detail. You notice a slight breeze as you take off your coat. That's odd. The windows are supposed to be closed. A knot forms in your throat as you begin to look around, stepping carefully in case something might jump out at you from the darkness. As you turn the corner, dread spreads through your body. The light in your kitchen is on and the door is cracked open. You consider grabbing a weapon, but you don't really own anything that could serve as such, other than the knives in the kitchen, that is. A part of you tells you that you might have forgotten to turn off the lights when you left. Don't panic just yet. You begin to take a few more careful steps towards the kitchen and cautiously push the door open further. You find him there, the man who asked for your number, leaning against the counter. Casually inspecting his nails, the window is wide open. There's something different about him this time. His entire skin has become blue, and the squiggly lines now stretch from both sides of his mouth. The dark blue eyes have become purple. Welcome home, lion. There is something incredibly deranged in his gaze. He pushes himself off the counter. You're about to take a step back, but, it, but you barely manage to move your feet before the guy is suddenly right in front of you. He slams you against the wall, pinning you in place, his entire face is twitching horribly. You like me, right? You said so. There's so much excitement in his voice. Ah, but you also like him. 
What are you talking about? Let go! You try to struggle. His grip tightens. It's hurting you. It's not fair, Lion. Even know his name. Never bothered to ask mine. Twitch, twitch. Why did you ask for his number? Didn't give me yours. Are you some kind of player? I... Yeah. I, I am playing this game right now. You're cut off by his frustrated groan. Ugh, he won't shut up. He won't shut up! He clenches his teeth as his hands press harder against his shoulder. It hurts real bad. If he keeps this up, he's going to break his shoulders. How fragile am I? Twitch, twitch, twitch. His face begins to change. The eyes shrink down and the mouth reverts to a normal shape. The skin turns rosy. He was shocked to see the florist he met yesterday take the place of the thing from before. Keith? Keith almost looks giddy. His smile is no less deranged than that of the blue-skinned guy. He lets out a giggle. One that sends shivers through your entire body. You don't feel any less threatened. You don't mind this line, do you? We've waited so long for someone like you. You can't tell what's happening right now. Is this some kind of nightmare? What you're witnessing shouldn't be possible in reality. They always leave me. We are going to stay. Is he like us both? You try to break free again, but the arms holding you in place don't budge. Looking down at them, you notice his hands are still blue. It has Keith's face, but the thing from before is still holding you in place. What do you want? Stay with me. Twitch. Once out of its mouth begin to stretch open, it goes up and up until it stops right below his eye. Blue spots start to reappear like bruises left by invisible punches. Stay with me. The right eye is whining again. Twitch, twitch. You're not sure who is talking anymore. Stay with us. The voice has become uneven. At parts, you can hear Keith's voice, and somewhere at the back, and once every two words, the other one joins in. We'll be so happy together. We will never leave each other's side. Your legs are turning into mush. You want to scream, but no sound is coming out. Keith? Keith, I'm, I'm wondering if you're okay. You, you got a little something in your eye right there. Never leave us, Lion. We'll be together until our bodies draw together in a coffin. Until the world ends. Until there's nothing left but dust. They laugh and pant, leaning in to leaning in close to your face. The next sentence comes in a whisper. Don't close the game. Bad end. Together forever. Right, so if I recall, basically what I did wrong was asking for his number. I think it's okay for me to think he's cute, but just... I, I gotta play the hot and cold game. I gotta make sure that I'm not too hot for either one of these. So, I'm not gonna bother. He's not my type. So, screw off, Keith. Uh, as for you, wait, he's asking me for my number. So, I say... Uh, yeah, sure, why not? You pull out a pen. It's okay if I write the back of your hand. We'll skip ahead. I find him weirdly attractive. Let's skip ahead. He kind of left without giving me a pledge. He kind of left without giving me a chance to introduce myself. You know, the name's Tenebris. A pleasure to meet ya. You begin to back away. He makes his move as well, stepping towards you. What's wrong? Don't worry. I won't hurt you. Why are you here? How'd you get in? You try to keep it calm for now. Maybe you could make it back to the hallway and grab your phone from your coat. You just need to keep it distracted. Does it matter? I wanted to talk to you some more. I'm usually not in control for a long time. Not in control? What is he even talking about? Said you like me. You don't mind me staying for a bit, do you? I would have brought you something, but there... There was no time. He almost seems clueless as to how abnormal the situation is. Uh, well, he needs to leave. Let him... Uh, I want to let him stay. I'm no way I'm going to call the cops. You got to let him stay. You mull this over. Any sane person in this situation will call the cops at this lunatic. But you're not one of those sane people. Besides, he has this innocent air about him that makes you believe he genuinely means no harm. All right, you can stay for a bit, but then I'm going to need you to leave. It's late and I'm tired. Tenebris gives you a wide, creepy grin, which you assume is meant to express happiness. Ah, yeah, I promise not to hang around for too long. Okay, well, 
Make yourself comfortable, I guess. You want anything to drink? Tenebris takes a seat on one of the kitchen stools and nods. The grin never leaves his face. Must be really happy you allowed him to stay. You open your fridge and name a few things you have in there. After handing him his drink and getting one for yourself, you take a seat opposite of him. Uh, it's a weird first date, but I kind of like it. Tell me about yourself. Uh, so what was so great about me that I compelled you to bring it to my apartment? I want to be sassy! God! Uh, but you know what? I'm going to be sweet. I'm going to be sweet. It's a weird first date. Tenebris' face turns a slightly darker shade of blue, and his eyes somehow become even wider than they already were. Oh, you're... you're considering this a date. He seems very... He seemed very confident before, but now he's suddenly become bashful. If you don't want me to, I... I won't. No, I mean, yes, I do want you to. Consider it a date, that is. He bites his lip, revealing a few sharp teeth. Yeah, I'm not very good at this. You can't help but let out a small laugh. Yeah, it's alright, but enduring. He opens his mouth to say something else, but winces before any sound can come out. Is something wrong? Tenebris holds his head in his hands and groans. Sorry, I... I have to go. He stands up and sloppily makes his way to the window. You stand up as well. You sure? Let me help. You can't help. It's fine. It was nice to meet you. At least use the goddamn door! Why are you jumping out the window? You goddamn idiot! Before he can stop him, he's jumped out the window. All he can do is stare in shock. You rush over to see if he's okay. You stick your head out the window just in time to spot him running down the street. This is the second floor. How do you do that? So many questions swim through your head. Was this guy even human? This was the second time he'd done something impossible today. The next time you see him, you're gonna need him to do a lot of explaining. Or at least you hope to see him again, even if it's just to satiate your curiosity. Day 2 A new day starts and a weekend along with it, but your mind is stuck on the guy from last night. You still have so many questions. If you hadn't exchanged a few messages with him after he'd left, you'd think it was all a dream. It's exciting, it's frightening, it's intriguing. A lot of interesting things have happened. You're curious to see where this is going to go. Never before have you had to deal with something like this. Perhaps you'll take a walk to gather your thoughts. Think of what you'll do next. Maybe you'll also stop by the flower shop. Perhaps Keith will be there again. The weather is nice today. Somewhat warm for the middle of autumn, but pleasant nonetheless. It's not a long walk to the shop. It's funny how close by it is, yet you never paid it any... You never paid it much attention. The flower perfume hits you as soon as you approach it. A girl with bright green hair is tending to some of the plants outside. You think you've seen her once or twice before, on your way to work. Sid, she looks so busy, and you're not here to ask about plans. You walk past her and push the door open. Uh, the bell clings and clanks above your head. Keith is standing behind a counter. Only this time, he's not alone. A middle-aged woman in a pink coat is grasping a purse very tightly as she speaks in an aggravated tone. This is unheard of! You're refusing to take my order! I'm sorry, ma'am. It's not that we don't want to do it. We simply can't get all of it done in such a short amount of time. Keith is doing a great job at staying calm and speaking politely, but the woman is having none of it. She starts to raise a voice. Do you understand that I need these decorations by the end of the next week? If my daughter's wedding gets ruined, it's going to be your fault. I will step in. You can't just stand by while this lady yells at a poor guy and makes unreasonable requests. Excuse me, how long are you going to argue like this? Sounds like your request is impossible. She looks even more furious as she turns to you, her shoulders stiff and eyes wide. How rude! Mind your business! This has nothing to do with you! You're not the only person trying to buy flowers. I think it is my business if you plan on standing here screaming for God knows how long. Why, you! Hey, lady. Scram. The woman is cut short by a much deeper voice than Keeps. She turns around, startled. Her eyebrows shoot up. Into her bags, and her mouth falls open when she sees a pair of wide red eyes and rows of sharp teeth greeting her in place of Keith's gentle face. She lets out a yelp and takes several steps back until her heel hits one of the potted plants being displayed. You are just as shocked as her, the guy from before, the one who broke into her apartment. He's standing there, wearing Keith's clothes, where Keith once stood. Is this some form of hallucination? Did you not get any? Did you not get enough sleep last night? Some kind of whine comes out of the woman's throat, something akin to a wounded cat. Then she quickly hurries out of the shop, pale as a ghost. 
Apparently, she saw it too. So, this is a doll in your head. Ah, frick. Didn't think you'd be here. Keith was focusing on the hag. He didn't mention you. The woman stands there, frozen, eyes wide and mouth hanging open. She then begins to turn slowly and wear the same startled expression. Walks to the door of the store and leaves. Wait, I thought she left! He smacks his forehead as his eyes close in frustration. What exactly is going on? I, uh... I don't know if you've realized it yet, but I'm not human. I kind of live inside someone else's body, but, uh... He looks towards the door. You turn to look as well. The girl you saw outside before is standing there, about to come in. I don't have time to explain right now. You can come back when his shift is over at 2 p.m. I can do it then. You open your mouth to respond, but his skin has already turned pale, and his features have reverted back to their original state. Keith gives you a nervous smile. Um... Hi. Sorry you had to see that. The other employee comes in and stops at your side to look between you and Keith. The tag on her chest reads Melissa. Is everything alright? I saw a lady leave the shop. Looked kind of agitated. Yeah, she had a very big order. She had a really big order with a tight deadline. I told her we couldn't get it done, so she left somewhat upset. The lie comes out seemingly of no effort. If he hadn't been there to witness it, you would have believed him without question. Ah, <sighs> what a pity. Is there anything we can do for you, though? She turns to you with a cheerful smile. He's still another glance at Keith. He has also switched to his perfect customer service smile, but there are still traces of the nervousness from before in his eyes. Even if you wanted to, you doubt you could explain what you'd just seen, so you shake your head. Ah, it's alright. I just came to, uh, check on something. Thank you. Uh, have a nice day. You give them both a brief wave before making your way out of the shop. Well, so much for clearing your head. I think we did the opposite of clearing our heads. Hours later, you're standing in front of the shop again. Keith is no longer there. Neither is Tenebris. You ask Melissa, the girl from before, whether he finished his shift. She tells you that he did and that he said he'd be back to meet you in a few minutes. So you wait, and luckily, not for long. You hear footsteps approaching, fast. Tenebris takes a sharp turn around the corner, nearly falling over in the process. He slows down when he sees you and comes to a stop to catch his breath. Sorry for making you sorry for making you wait. I ran home to change clothes. I can't stand Keith's. Oh, they're always so tight and uncomfortable. Right, sharing a body with someone else must create problems of this sort. It's fine. You can just text me next time. Get my number after all. Yeah, right. I've uh never had someone to text or call before. Got to forgot phones could also do that. But anyway, you're here for an explanation. You want to take a walk while I do it? There's a park nearby. Right. You know the park he's talking about. It's a well-maintained place with long, winding paths, right by the edge of the forest. It's likely a little crowded on a Saturday afternoon, though. It doesn't take long to reach it. Once you've chosen a path to walk down, Tenebris begins to fidget nervously with his hands. You don't try to urge him to speak, and instead let him take his time. The scenery is nice, at least. Bright yellow, orange, red, and brown leaves that create the ground. Couples and families chat as they stroll about. Someone is playing catch with their dog. The attention steps back to Tenebris when he clears his throat. I'm guessing you've heard legends about kids getting stolen from their parents and replaced with something else? Something from the forest? Um, I mean, occasionally we've got different, we've got different folklore here. I think I have. Um, I'm something like that. A changeling. A fae. Whatever you guys call us, we're close to nature and we don't usually get along with humans. As changelings often integrate among you though, by taking your forms. I was supposed to kill my host from the inside at birth and take over the body. It's kind of how I would have become a full changeling, but I failed. Now we're stuck together. You listen quietly, take in a new information. A changeling. Does make sense, seeing how he can change the way his body looks. As far as you remember, the Fae aren't something you should be messing with. Your eyes wander to the edge of the forest, beyond a metal fence ahead of you. After all that you've witnessed, it's a tad late to still consider it impossible. It's beginning to feel like you've entered a fairy tale. That's frightening. Why did you fail? Is this common? Why did you fail? It's not common. It's a one in a million occurrence. Normally, the human stands no chance, but Keith was different. He has a strong mind. You're beginning to make yourself accept that you're speaking to a supernatural entity. The Fae are known for being unreliable tricksters. How do I know you aren't a threat to me? You could ask me. We can't lie. You hesitate before settling on a question. 
Are you going to harm me? As long as you don't give me a reason to protect myself or key from you. I have no intention of hurting you. You nod. You can't consider it a guarantee, but at least it's something. Uh, you find him even more intriguing now. You're even more cautious of him. You're not going to let this keep you away. Uh, you find him even more intriguing now. An actual fae right in front of you. You feel even more drawn to him than before. Who knows how many more unbelievable things you'll get to witness by sticking to his side. Also, what would it mean if I gave a, gave a fae my number? Like, does he own my number now? The two of you now walk in silence. Tenebris is rubbing the back of his neck as he looks around. He's trying to avoid looking at you. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect to get this far. I thought you'd laugh at me or call me a liar or run away. I watch you and Keith switch places right before my eyes. Twice, may I add. And I'm currently talking to a blue man. I don't think there's room for skepticism anymore. You sure seem to be taking it well, though. I'm glad. A small smile creeps onto your lips. You won't get rid of me so easily. Get rid of you? Wasn't trying to. You joked in land, apparently. I was joking. Yeah, I bad then. Still not really used to human language. The awkward silence returns. To you return your attention to your surroundings, Tenebris is making a lot of heads turn and not in a good way. A few of the kids walking by even hide behind their parents or point as they walk. The adults mostly try to hush them, perhaps assuming he's wearing a costume, the same way you did the first time. Tenebris isn't taking all of the attention very well. He's frowning at the ground, hands stuffed in his pockets. His frown deepens with every new, Mommy, why is the guy blue? I've forgotten there's a lot of people at the park during the daytime. Are you more used to coming here at night? Yeah, I usually go out at night in general. Today's special, I guess. Suggests that you head back so he doesn't have to deal with the crowd. Suggests he switch with Keith, try to cheer him up. Uh, well, I'll try to cheer him up. He's clearly uncomfortable being given so much negative attention. Perhaps he can do something to make him feel better. There's an ice cream stand not too far ahead. It's not really ice cream season, but the weather is pretty warm. Would you like it if I treated you to some? The simple suggestions manages to banish every trace of displeasure from his face. He nods eagerly, reminding you of a kid to, about to be given a snack. You two make your way to the stand. Tenebris gets three scoops of chocolate ice cream and the two of you your favorite flavors. He stares at you as you take out your wallet to pay for him. You sure you don't want me to pay for mine? Ah, says my treat, didn't I? He shrugs and returns his focus to the ice cream as you hand the money to the vendor. Why don't we find somewhere to sit? We can look for a bench in a more remote area. Yeah, that'd be nice. You walk around some more in search of said bench. Tenebris is now in much higher spirits, despite people still staring at him. He only cares about the treat in his hand. Eventually, you come across an empty bench at the end of one of the smaller paths. It's far from the playground to the dead ends, making it less popular with the people walking their dogs or wandering arm in arm with their partners. Tenebris is already halfway done with his ice cream by the time he sits down. I don't know if it's a good idea to eat them so quick, so quickly. Huh? This is me eating it slowly. I usually just take bites out of it. And you don't get brain freeze? What's that? You know, when you bite into something really cold and your head hurts for a little while? I've never had that happen. You're one lucky one, said. Since you can't say the same thing about yourself, you return to slowly eating ice cream. However, you notice him stealing glances at it every once in a while. Eh, uh, I'll offer him some. You want to try mine? He hesitates. Can I? You already paid for both. I don't mind. It's just a little taste. Okay, then. Don't mind if I do. You hold it out to him. His hand comes to rest over yours as he tilts it towards his face and leads in to take a small bite. Well, do you like it? Chocolate is still the best, but this ain't bad either. Really? So not even an indirect kiss from me can beat your favorite flavor. Huh? He looks between your face and the ice cream. His cheeks gradually turn a bright shade of purple as his gaze finally settles on your lips. Ah, uh, well, I'll tease him some more. What's wrong? Tin won my indirect kiss. I, d I mean, not indirectly. I mean, ah, I just... He stops himself from continuing and covers his face with his hands as he turns away from you. His ears have become a much brighter shade of purple than before, now nearing a pinkish hue. You hold it a laugh for a dangerous supernatural being. He sure is easy to fluster. You take pity on him and change the subject. 
The conversation continues for a while, although Tenebris doesn't always understand certain figures of speech or insinuations. He doesn't let that stop him from enjoying it. He just needs to stop from time to time to ask what you actually mean to say. He tells you about the stray cats he feeds in the evenings at his favorite spot in the forest. As expected, he prefers nature and animals over people. Also, he doesn't strike you as unfriendly either. Maybe just a tad awkward. Eventually, you decide it's about time you head back, so you start making your way out of the park. Say, yeah? How can you tell when you're on a date? You smile knowing where this is going. It helps to ask a person, but it usually is a date if two people are romantically interested in each other or are going out. So, could these, could this be considered a date? I'd say so. Oh, huh, good, great. His smile, he smiles sheepishly as he rubs the back of his neck. You've reached the end of the park. All that's left is say goodbye. I'll look forward to future dates. Uh, I'll kiss him on the cheek. You quickly dart closer to him and gently grab his chin to plant a kiss on his cheek. His hand comes to rest on the spot your lips touch after you pull away. He's become a little purple again. Right. Yeah. You wave to him as you go. See ya. He waves back, a dreamy smile spreading over his face. On your way home, you go over the events of today in your head. You've got answers, at least. What's to make you wonder what's going to happen to you from here on? You doubt one easily goes back to a regular life after meeting and speaking to a fae in the flesh. Lost in thought, you fail to notice the man that walked out in front of you while exiting the nearby store. You still manage to stop just in time, avoiding a collision. Look out at him. You may as well compare him to a mountain. He looks to be about six foot five tall. Heavily built, with a thick mane of wavy black hair covering his white shoulders. He glances at you with a raised eyebrow. My bad. The man grins. It's not a friendly smile. You aren't sure what's so amusing to him, but it gives you a bad feeling. You go around him, quickening your pace. In your haste, as you turn the corner, you end up crashing into someone else. Whoa there! Jacob, your co-worker, grabs your arm by reflex, either to steady you or himself. Oh god, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I should apologize. I was distracted by a cookie. I wasn't looking where I was going. You look down at a dog in question, who stares back up at you, wagging her tail. Crumbs. Jacob's other dog is also at his side, but she's too busy sniffing the ground to pay you any attention. It's the first time you've seen him in person, so you were aware of their existence. Jacob brings them up often when he talks to you at work. It wasn't just you. I've had some strange things happen lately. I guess it made me kind of stressed and paranoid. Weird things? Like what? You realize your mistake. Maybe you should have said that. You can't exactly tell him the truth. You think you're insane, but he's also the curious, insistent type. He will likely try to get at least some form of minimal information out of you. Uh, what are you doing in this part of the city? Say so you need to go. I'll ask what he's doing in this part of the city. It's probably best that you change the subject and try to distract him with something else. It's complicated, but I thought you live in a different area. What brings you to this part of the city? A friend lives here. Why don't you come by and give Cookie and Crumb with me? Uh, the Fluffballs love him. He wants to get his own dog, but his girlfriend says their place is too small. They can't really afford to get a bigger one right now, so... Jacob continues to talk in great detail about the lives of people we've never met and aren't interested in knowing about. Still, the mundane conversation makes you forget about the weird man from earlier and the sudden fear he struck in you. You eventually part waves with Jacob when he realizes it's about time he got home to feed his dogs. The little hallway of your apartment is a comforting sight when you finally make it home. It's only late afternoon, and yet exhaustion is already weighing on your mind. Might as well spend what little is left of the day relaxing. You change into something comfortable. Get yourself a quick snack and plop down on your couch to see if you can find something nice to watch. Maybe a show you haven't tried yet, but you've been meaning to. Several episodes play. You're paying attention at first, but as the hours pass, the exhaustion begins to take over. Your eyelids grow heavy and your head slips to the side. Nestled comfortably in blankets, you drift off to sleep. An odd scuttling sound causes you to jolt awake. The room is now dark. You can't even tell whether your eyes are open at first. When did you turn off the TV? In a state of half-asleep confusion, you can't tell whether the sound you heard was real. Groggily, you force yourself to sit up on the couch and squint as you feel around for your phone. Then comes the scuttling again. You freeze. It wasn't in your imagination. It's coming from the corner of the room. Slowly, you turn your head. Corner thing? Oh, it's a spider. It's there, in the upper corner, stretching over the walls, a horrific, spider-like creature. Little growing orbs peek at you from the depths of what looks like a pot. 
as long, thin legs grip the walls. Uh, turn on the light? That can't be right. Is there really a gigantic spider in your living room? Despite the slight anxiety it caused you, you convince yourself to get up and turn on the light. When you turn... When you look back at the same spot, there's no monster there. Only the spider plant sits in its pot on the floor, like any plant should. You must have been seeing things after waking up in dark all of a sudden. Feeling a bit silly for getting so worked up over so little, you go to your bedroom for a proper rest. Luckily, nothing wakes you up until morning this time. Date 3 a week goes by. Every once in a while, when you're alone at home, you think you hear strange sounds again, like cockroaches. They appear only to die out and then reappear another night. They're always quiet, hushed. You can never tell for certain whether you're imagining things. It worries you. Are you losing your mind? You try to ignore them most of the time and blame it on the fact that your life has recently taken a turn for the unusual. You haven't had the time to see the florist and the fae possessing his body again. The three of you still spoke through messages a few times throughout the week. Whenever you spotted Keith at his shop on your way to work, he would wave and he'd wave back. Eventually, Keith got you to agree to meet up again. He suggested a little restaurant where the two of you could get lunch together. Oh, I was hoping to see Tenebris again. I'm currently getting ready for a set outing. I'm wondering what to wear. I'll make sure you look nice, dressed the way you always do. I'm gonna look nice. You pick one of your best outfits, make sure your hair looks good, and add an accessory or two. Your doorbell rings no sooner and no later than the time you agreed on. And when you open it, Keith greets you with a big smile on his face and a pink rose in hand. Hey, Lion. Hey, you're punctual. Of course. Wouldn't want to make you wait or rush you. And this is for you. He holds out the rose to you. Ah, well, thank you. Thank you. It's lovely. You take it and bring it to your face and take in the perfume. I'll put it in a vase and then we can go. It'll only take a minute. He nods. Once that's done, you lock your door and make your way out of the building. Keith is at by Keith is at your side. The bus station isn't far. He makes small talk on the way. It's all going fine until you get on the bus and notice he keeps glancing at something behind you from time to time with a slightly irritated expression. You turn your head but find nothing out of the ordinary other than the people on the bus. Is something the matter? Someone kept Ugh. No, it's nothing. You sure? Yeah. Don't worry about it. You shrug it off in the end. The restaurant is not what you expected. There's so many plants and pots and on tables, climbing the walls and adorning windowsills. You think the building is double as a botanical garden. There are ficuses, small lemon trees, countless colorful orchids, philodendrons, lilies, and in a corner you spot an impressive wisteria bonsai tree. Keith picks a table by one of the windows next to a row of orchids. You're compelled to pause and admire their bright colors before sitting down. A waitress comes by and sets down two menus. You pick up yours and begin to scan the options. There are plenty of dishes you're familiar with, but also a few you've never tried before. Uh, you know what? Let's try something new. Getting something new wouldn't hurt. Maybe you'll discover your new favorite dish. Not anything like. The food here is both good and affordable. It's hard to believe with how beautiful the interior is as well. I think I did, and you're right. It's kind of impressive. How did you find it? Tenebris did. He sometimes wanders the streets in the evenings and finds all kinds of interesting little places. The waitress returns to take your order. You tell her yours and Keith gets pork with roasted potatoes. You can't help but notice the waitress is a little extra cheerful while speaking to Keith. She even compliments his choice of food. You try not to dwell on it and tell yourself it could be because he's a regular. Oh, how's the plant doing by the way? You see a plant in your living room. For some reason it sends a shiver down your spine. The odd sounds you've been hearing comes to mind. You push them away and focus on the question. It's doing well actually. Your instructions did help a lot. I still did a bit of research on my own. That's great to hear. You can always ask me again if you run into any problems. Did you give it a name? A name? Yeah, I name all my plans. So I suppose not everyone does that. Uh, well, maybe I should. Maybe I should give it a name then. What are some of yours called? He perks up cheerfully. My prayer plant is called Demetrius. I named that one. And my white orchid is called Cream Puff. Tenebris named that one. You snicker. He named a plant Cream Puff? Maybe I should ask him to name mine too. I can ask him right now. You can talk to him when he's not out? I can, and he can hear my thoughts in return. What does he think then, about my plant? He says you should name it Sherbert. She let out another snicker. Sherbert it is then. Silence falls between the two of you for a little while. Uh, well, can I talk to Tenebris? 
talk to him. I said you wanted to switch. Yeah. Oh, have I been boring? No! God, that's not my intention! Frick! The consequences of my actions! Uh, I only agreed to come here today because I was hoping to see him. It hasn't been that bad. I just want to say hi and see him for a minute. He looks down, thinking it over as a small frown forms on his face. Sorry, but it'll have to wait until later. I wanted to be just us for a little while longer. And I also want to talk to you about something. I'd rather tenebrous than interfere. What is it? I know the situation is strange and uncertain. The whole thing with me and Tenebris. If you're wary or worried, you'd have to stick around. It's not too late. You can still back out now. Now that you know what Tenebris is, you can leave us forever and nothing unpleasant will happen. We won't bother you again. He's right. It's not worth the risk. You're not gonna... I'm not gonna back out! No, I can handle it. I've decided I want to get to know you. Keith doesn't look as certain as you. Are you sure? I am. He sighs and runs a hand through his hair. Despite this, he's fighting back a smile. It's quite selfish to me that I was hoping you'd say that. I suppose I'll have no choice but to make sure you don't get hurt. Thank you. I, sh I should be the one saying that. Thank you for trusting and believing in us. Even though you barely know us, we'll try our best to become deserving of it. You smile at his resolve. You change back to a more carefree topic for a while. Until the food arrives, you both fall back into silence for some time as you dig in. Enjoy what you ordered. Food is alright. You should have tried to experiment! Enjoy what you ordered. He was right when he said the food here is good. You're very happy with your order. It looks like he's enjoying his food as well, or at least you think so. He's looking at you more than he's looking at the food on his plate. At one point in between each bite, Keith leans against his palms and glances at the orchids by the window. Did you know that green orchids are seen as a symbol of good fortune? I didn't. He follows his gaze to the green orchid he's admiring. Do you know a lot about flower symbolism? I suppose you would, since you work in a flower shop. I work in a flower shop because I love plants, though I've always found their language fascinating. What about the pink rose? What does it symbolize? Generally, they can mean joy, gratitude, and admiration. They can be romantic, but in a gentler way, not as intense as the red ones. But a single pink rose without thorns can also mean love at first sight. You don't remember if your rose had thorns or not, but from the way Keith looks at you, with shining eyes and gentle smile, you may have not. You finish your food and so does Keith. He then offers to pay for both orders himself. It's because he invited you, he tells you. Doesn't seem like he's going to budge on it, so you let him. When the waitress brings back the check and sets it in front of him, Keith blinks in surprise and picks out a single piece of paper. Um, what's that? It's her number. Sorry, this is unexpected. He gives you an apologetic look. You want to see what he plans to do with it? You don't really care? I want to see what he does with it. He didn't do anything wrong. There's no need to apologize. He looks a tad distraught as you both begin to leave. He crumbles a piece of paper in his hand and throws it in a trash can on his way out of the restaurant. You're about to bid him goodbye, but you notice him nervously fidgeting in place and glancing around. Would you mind if I walked you home? Yeah, sure. Something no matter? I just heard some scary rumors recently and I'd rather make sure you stay safe on your way back. Aw. It's nice of you. So you make your way back together. However, this time he is much less chatty. He seems on edge the whole time. Every few seconds, his eyes would dart around as if in search of something in particular. What kind of rumors did he hear to make him seem so worried? Keith, you okay? Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? I feel like something's bothering you. It's not even dark out. Why are you so worried? That's nothing. Don't worry about it. He smiles, but it isn't very convincing. Since it doesn't sound like he'll tell you what the actual problem is, you decide to leave it be. The rest of the way is spent in silence. You only turn to speak to him again when you've reached the door to your apartment complex. Ah, uh, well... Can I see Tenebris now? Are you going to let me see Tenebris now? He suddenly looks at you as if he's been forced to squeeze an entire lemon into his mouth. Perhaps another time. I do think it'd be good to let him out now. Why not? It just isn't. He sounds irritated, so you don't insist further. I have a really bad feeling about Keith, by the way. I think between the two, Tenebris is much more of a baby boy than uh, Keith. Keith looks innocent. I have a feeling Keith is the one that's absolutely unhinged, not Tenebris. I'm glad I got the chance to spend time with you today. I wish you a nice rest of the day. He says this rather dryly, then leaves without giving you a chance to respond. Ah, uh, well, I feel guilty. As you go inside, you're hit with an odd feeling. Something is about to happen, but you aren't sure what. Did you forget anything at the restaurant? You don't think so. It'd be something you should have done before you left. You reach your door, unlock it, take off your shoes and coat away, put away your keys, and begin to walk around the apartment looking for anything that might be amiss. You find nothing. Maybe Keith's behavior rubbed off on you. 
You just need to relax. This is what you begin to do. Twenty minutes later, after you changed your clothes and made yourself busy for other things, you hear a loud ringing sound. Something is busy. Something is buzzing in your apartment. That's odd. You weren't expecting anyone. It could very well be a prank, but you decide to check anyway. You begrudgingly make your way to the front door and press the top button to the intercom. The ringing stops, allowing your voice to come through on the other end. Yeah? You hear a shuffling sound, then a grunt, followed by what you believe is a man's voice shouting further away from the intercom in silence. All the anxiety you've been working on pushing away earlier is now returning, doubled. Hello? Or silence. Go downstairs to check. It's hard to tell what's happening on the other end. You're suddenly hit by the desire to head down there and see for yourself. Just do it. You want to. Yes, you do. You put on your coat and head down. There's nobody at the entrance by the apartment building. This was pointless. It was probably just some kids playing a prank. Wait. Don't go just yet. How about checking the alley on the right? Yeah, down that way. Keep going. Just a little further. Do you hear it? It's the sound of someone ripping something apart. It's flesh being torn. You turn the corner. Hi, Tenebris! How's it going? Oh, you absolute cutie. What are you doing right there? Oh, you ripping someone up for me? Aw, I appreciate it. What are you, like, okay, okay. Tell me all about it. Tenebris stands over a man. Drenched in blood. A wicked grin stretches over his face, opening his mouth to an inhuman degree. In his hand, he clutches a man's internal organ. You recognize the guy. He's the one who bumped into you. He took down someone that big of his bare hands. No, he didn't just take him down. He slaughtered him. Tenebris? He freezes on the spot. His grin falls as his eyes meet yours. Why? He was... He was going to... He stutters as he drops the bloody mess in his hands, as if burnt by it. The explanation is go isn't going to help. I can't prove I was doing it for you, or that he wanted to hurt you. Uh, what do you mean run and call the police? You don't know how you're going to escape with such a thing, but you try anyway. So you run as fast as your legs can take you out the alley, down the street, where there's people around to come to your aid. He doesn't follow. The police don't find anything in the alley when they arrive to search it. Not even blood traces. You must have forgotten you're dealing with a fae, a creature of trickery. Well, he's not gonna bother you anymore. Safe and... That's not what I wanted! Right, I'm gonna try a couple of different options just so I can try to get the Yandere ending with uh, Tanabris. So, I'm gonna ask him to tell me about himself. The suggestion catches him a little off guard. He tries... He he scratches his jaw and hums, trying to think of something to say. I'm in my 20s, I like video games and watching the stars, I hate liars and shallow people, and uh, yeah, I really like sweets. That was an interesting introduction. You decide to pick on something to focus on. I can't say I'm a fan of shallow people myself. I can't stand them. They'll go around acting like, like being pretty is all that matters. They look down on anybody who doesn't fit their standards. Makes me want to punch them every time. You're not an understanding. He opens his mouth to say something else, but winces before any sound can come out. Something wrong? Tenebris holds his head in his hands and groans. Sorry, I have to go. He stands up and sloppily makes his way to the window. You stand up as well, and we're gonna skip ahead, and I'm gonna say it's exciting. You can't believe your luck. How many people get to experience something crazy like this? The excitements make you restless. What will happen next, you wonder? You have a light breakfast and decide to go on a walk to settle down a little. Better yet, perhaps you can stop by the flower shop. Perhaps Keith will be there again, and we're gonna skip ahead. Right, I think over here, I'm supposed to say you're not going to let this keep you away. So what if he is a fae? He say he wouldn't get hurt without a good reason. You know about get scared and run away. You'd be missing out. The two of you now walk in silence. Tenebris is rubbing the back of his neck as he looks around. He's trying to avoid look at you. Skip. Uh, alright. Uh, suggest that you head back so he doesn't have to deal with the crowd. Would you rather we left? I can see the crowds that make you uncomfortable. Tenebris glances at you, then frowns at the ground for, you for a few seconds. Ultimately, he sighs and nods. Yeah, let's do that. I, uh, hope I did a good job explaining. I think so. It's a lot for me to think about. I appreciate you being honest. He nods. You make your way back in silence. You get the impression that Tenebris still wants to say something, but he remains quiet. He finally turns to you when you reach the exit to the park. Am I going to see you again after this? Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah, and in fact, like, you're gonna see me real soon. Let's skip ahead. Right, and on a date with Keith, I'm supposed to say I only agreed to come here today because I was hoping to see him. He visibly deflates. I... I see. He looks out, thinking it over, as a small frown forms on his face. 
Sorry, but I'll have to wait till later. I wanted to be just us for a little while longer. Eh, yeah, we're skipping ahead. Right, finally, finally. I've been trying so many combinations to get this, but now I can pick the option to believe him. So yeah, let's get, let's do that. He thought he was going to harm me. Tanabris looks you up and down, probably wondering what you're doing, still standing there instead of running away screaming. Uh, yeah, he's been following you around for a while. He had an axe in his backpack and he busts your apartment. A giggle escapes you. You muffle it with your fists, try to keep it together. Did Keeve somehow know about this? Remember how anxious he was earlier? Poor thing. He did. Ugh, why aren't you freaking out? There's a dead person in front of you. I killed him. He did. <laughs> oh, for little old me. I admit, I'm quite excited. Ugh, would you like it better if I pretended to be scared? No, I'm just kinda confused. You smile sweetly. The fake had lied, had they? So you're telling the truth when you say you did it for my sake. Do you need help getting rid of the body? Huh? No, I'm, I'm fine. We, ha we have our methods. I see. In that case, I'll wait for you inside. You can wash off the blood if you like. Are you sure? You're not scared of me at all. Of course not, silly. I'm ecstatic. You can't keep me waiting for long, okay? You blow him a little kiss as you go, practically skipping to your apartment. A dreamy sigh escapes you as you close the door behind you. You try to wait patiently, but excitement is so hard to contain. The image of him covered in blood, with that twisted smile on his face, keeps coming back to you and making your heart beat faster. He looks so handsome, standing over the corpse of a man that wanted to hurt you. Another giggle escapes you. He appears in your kitchen 20 minutes later, a bag in hand. You rush in as soon as you hear him coming. That was fast. What you do with a body in such a short amount of time? I took it to the woods and put a charm on the area where I buried it. Anybody who goes looking for it there will be walking in circles. You can do that? It sounds convenient. What's in the bag? Clothes. Keith hid them in the area earlier today. Huh. Smart. You go up to him, eyeing him up and down. He still looks a little wary, but you pay it no mind. Instead, you grab him by the sweater and pull him towards you. It'll be a while before it dries. The blood... The smell is still so strong. You run your hand over his chest, making your way to his neck, then his face. And now you need to wash it off. Truly a shame seeing you like this. It makes me burn. He lets out a breath. His face is close enough for it to hit your skin. The bag drops to the floor. You watch with satisfaction as his cheeks turn purple. I could put off washing it for a bit longer. His eyes, his eyes trill down to your lips. He inches closer. What do you mean it makes you burn? Without warning, you shove him to the wall. He grunts as his back hits it. Before he can mutter another inquiry, your lips crash over his. He hums in surprise. However, moments later, his arms are around you, pulling you closer. His kisses are clumsy, but eager to return. I am going to take it further, even further beyond. Is what I would say, but that's going up on Patreon instead, so I've got to stop here. His breathing has become heavier. By the time you pull away and the adorable blush from earlier has intensified, you smile. Does that answer your question? I, uh, I guess so. He bashfully avoids your gaze. It's such a strong contrast to the bloodthirsty expression he was making earlier. Steady over that corpse, you feel so lucky that you get to witness both. Come on, let's get you cleaned up. You give him space to push himself off the wall and pick up his clothes from where he dropped them. Then you give him a towel and show him where the bathroom is. It doesn't take long. When he comes out, he's no longer wearing the beige and pastels that you associate with Keith. The change of clothes is in its usual dark tones. There we go. The blood looked good on you, but now you look more like yourself. You pat the spot next to you on the couch. Come here. Let me dry your hair. He does as he wants. You plug in the hairdryer and begin your work. But you only kiss me because of the blood. The question takes you by surprise. What a silly thing to ask. Of course not. I can't possibly think of you... Without feeling weak in the knees. You're so enticing, so handsome, so captivating. You gently run your fingers through his hair. But seeing you like that and knowing you'd go so far just for me? You sigh dreamily and wrap your arms around him. It smells like your shampoo and body wash. It's making me adore you even more. The tips of his ears turn purple again. You kiss one, make him yelp. You wouldn't do this for anybody else, would you? The voice drops a whisper at the last two words. Myself, you and Keith are the only ones I've ever done it for. I wouldn't do it for just anybody. You hum, satisfied. Let him go resume drying his hair. 
As the minutes pass, Tanabris begins to relax more and more. By the time his hair is almost done, he is leaning into your touch. Do you like having your hair touched? I like it when you do. You gently knead through his soft curls, a smile spread over your face. You don't feel like a human, huh? He seems like he enjoys asking blunt questions that comes out of seemingly nowhere. Humans are distrusting, paranoid, and easily frightened. Even the naive ones would be afraid if they saw someone standing over a fresh corpse. You still hung up over that. Then you can say some humans are somewhat twisted. I'm just happy you're the same. It seems good to be true. I can prove it if you like. Just tell me who. Maybe someone who has been bothering you or Keith? Perhaps that rude lady at the flower shop. I could get rid of her for you. Nah, I'll take your word for it. You plant a kiss on top of his head and turn off the hairdryer. Well done. He turns around to face you. Thanks. Do you want me to leave now? You can stay longer. Maybe even overnight. You can use the couch if you don't feel comfortable sleeping in bed with me. You... You let me sleep in your bed? His eyes shine with excitement. Only sleeping. But yeah, if you want to. Do I get more kisses if I do? You laugh. Sure. He grins happily, revealing his sharp teeth. Seeing it makes you feel like you've won something valuable. Bad end. Not so different. Right, one last thing down Tenebris is route, which is to ignore the sounds on stairs. It's only a dumb prank, you tell yourself. Maybe someone simply pressed the wrong button by accident. Either way, there's no need to give it extra attention. You turn away from the intercom, it doesn't ring again. Eventually, the anxious feeling goes away. You do a few chores, eat dinner, take a shower. You forget about the mad and buzzy your apartment. Then as you're about to start getting ready for bed, you hear a thud. It takes you a moment to register where it came from. The neighbors? It felt more like it came from the hallway. Your heart is suddenly thumping loudly in your chest. A knot forms in your throat. What are you so afraid of? Strange noises happen all the time in a building full of people. For a second time, you make your way into the hallway. You open the door and turn on the light. There's nothing there. You're about to go check. I mean, you're, gonna, you're about to go back when you hear something from the kitchen. You squint your eyes in the darkest place. In the darkness, past the threshold, it does not give away what made the sound. It continues. It's as if something is rolling on the floor. Until... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down there? Hey! Hey! How are you doing? Man, you really got ahead of yourself, huh? Uh, grab something, anything? Your mind races. Someone's in your apartment. Someone who killed a man, and whoever it is. They are going to toy with you before they kill with you before they kill you too. You rush to the dresser in the hallway and yank out a drawer. But you've hidden a big knife ever since the Tenebris incident. Now armed with a proper weapon, you step back into the living room without taking your eyes off the kitchen entrance. The best place you can hide is the bathroom after checking to make sure it's empty. With the door locked and the knife clenched tightly in your hand, you call the emergency number. Fifteen excruciating minutes later, the police arrive. They search your apartment, but no trace of any severed heads or decapitators can be found. Not even a drop of blood. There are no signs of a break-in either. You answer all their questions, try to convince them you truly did see a man's head rolling on your floor. You're quite certain they think you're insane. Ultimately, you're left standing there, alone in your apartment again. You'd seen it. It was real. You're sure of it. You aren't crazy. You stay at your friend's place that night. To be continued. Right, now we're going down Keith's route, and for this, I'm gonna ask for his number, skip ahead, we already know what happens. I'm gonna say no way to Tenebris. Sorry, but I'm gonna have to say no. You hurry past him, hoping he won't follow. It doesn't seem like he does. There's no sign of him for the rest of the way. You get home and unlock your door. Your apartment is just as you left it, and skip. You start to back away as fear sprouts in your chest. How did he get in? So fast, too. Could have sworn you left him behind. What are you doing in my apartment? Just thought I'd say hi and introduce myself. You didn't really give me a chance, you know. It was kind of cold. Your back hits the wall and you begin to feel around for the door opening. The intruder looks amused by your panic. Am I that scary looking? Don't worry. I won't do anything as long as you don't provoke me. The name's Tenebris. He pushes himself away from the counter and begins to move towards you. Stay back! Tenebris stops and frowns. You initially think it's thanks to your warning, but he then brings a hand to his head and lets out a slight groan. For God's sake, not now! He holds his head in his hands and digs a finger into his hair. Go away! You're not sure if he's talking to you or if he's just insane. Maybe both. You're about to take the opportunity to flee, but the side before you keeps you in place. His appearance begins to change. The blue skin turns rosy. The squiggly lines revert 
back into her normal shaped mouth and the eyes shrink down. By the time he lowers his hands and looks at you, he's turned into a different person, a person you've seen before. Keith? Um, sorry. This shouldn't have happened. It's all my fault. You're so stunned. You can barely form a comprehensive sentence. Are you in some kind of messed up dream? How the hell does happen? It's a bit hard to explain. He looks at you with unease. Are you going to call the police? I don't know. I probably should. I want an explanation. Do you have some kind of double personality? He shakes his head. No, it's more complicated than that. He's been with me since I was born. It's like a separate entity. There's no way that's possible. Well, you just saw a switch. And you still haven't had time to process what you... You still haven't had time to process what you just witnessed. Alright, let's say I believe you. What reason do I have not to call the cops on a guy who broke into my apartment? I promise it won't happen again. It's my fault. I was tired and he's able to get full control when I'm exhausted. You stare at him for a moment. He looks genuinely guilty. And that pitiful look he's giving you is kind of convincing. But then again, would it really be a good idea to let him off so easily? I'm not gonna call the cops. A small sigh escapes you. You might you might be out of your mind letting this guy off the hook so easily, but for now, you're not going to alert the authorities. Alright, I believe you. The relief on his face is immense. But this doesn't make me any less shocked. What did you mean when you said he's some kind of entity? Is he dangerous? He isn't any more dangerous than any other person. I promise. I never let him do anything bad to you. Okay. Um... This is kind of fascinating. Is this why you didn't want to give me your number? It's all right. I'm not scared of him. Ah, all right. This is kind of fascinating. I'm going to be honest. This situation is odd, but also kind of fascinating. Huh? I haven't seen anything like it. Is he some kind of demon? You find us fascinating? You seem to have left him speechless. Sorry. Was that offensive? I wasn't really... Ah, no, it's okay. I'm, I was just shocked. People usually tell me to stay away from them or make sure they never see Tenebris again. But no, I don't think he's a demon. You have to ask him for a proper explanation if you really want one. Not very good at it. You notice a little smile tug at a corner of his lips as he speaks. Ah, but I should go now. I'm still bothering you at such a late hour. I'm sorry for everything again. He's starting to make his way past you out of the kitchen. Ah, uh, well, uh, ask him if he stay a bit longer. Ask if he give you his number this time. Let him go. I am going to ask him to stay a little longer. Would it be a problem if I ask you to stay a bit longer? Keith stops in his tracks and looks at you with wide eyes. You want me to stay? Are you sure? You nod. Only if you want to, of course. Yeah. He bursts out happily. Then a pink hue appears on his cheeks and he lets out an embarrassed chuckle. I mean, sure. He is positively adorable. All right, great. Make yourself comfortable then. You lead him to sit down on in your kitchen and offer something to drink. Is this really okay? Kind of a stranger who broke into your home. He nervously fiddles with the glass. You sit across from him, setting your arms on the table as you face him. Well, I'm not afraid of you, and I think you're cute, so I'm giving you a second chance. Besides, it wasn't you who broke in, right? That gets him to smile in a way that he hasn't done until now. You think I'm cute? Yeah, you're quite nice looking too, so... Normally, I pick something a little more romantic for a first date. True, but we'll settle for a short and odd first date for now. Alright, in that case, I'd love to get to know you better. Tell me about yourself. Well, uh, not that interesting. I'm more of a stay inside person. I'm the, I'm the outgoing type. I love meeting new people. I'm more or less an eccentric. People can consider me sort of odd. I mean... True for the matter is I am a bit of an eccentric, but uh, you know what? Yep, yep, I'm a bit of an eccentric. Ah, I think you're wonderful. I mean, I'm sure it's because they don't know you well. What about you, though? I would love to know more about you. You prop your chin against your joined hands as you gaze at him with a big smile. Ah, I'm just... His sentence is interrupted by a yawn. Oh gosh, right. You said you were tired earlier. Sorry, should let you go home and rest. Ah, but I'd love to stay longer say it's a date and all. We'll have another one. Hold on. I'll be right back. You hurry out of the kitchen to find a pen and some paper. You then return with your number written on it and hand it to Keith. He beams as he takes it. Thank you. This time, he finally gets up and leaves for good. The smile never leaves his face. You see him to the door. It's dark out, so be careful. I will. Don't worry. Good night, lion. The gay stays on the door for a while longer after he's closed it behind him. Looks like in the end, you still scored a date with the flower boy. 
A wide grin spreads over your face. You can't wait to see him again. Day two, and we're skipping ahead. Right, so let's just say it's exciting. Skip ahead, and we are not supposed to interfere. You know, I get involved in what is currently happening. Skip. The other person in Keith's body has no plans of letting this go on for much longer. To your relief, you watch his skin begin to turn blue. The edges of his mouth stretching out in wavy lines all the way to the top of his cheekbones. His eyes widen and turn purple. His brows furrow. Get your pruny ass out of here if you don't want to get eaten alive! The woman stands there, frozen. Eyes wide and mouth hanging open. She then begins to turn and, wearing the same startled expression, walks to the door of the store and leaves. Once she's gone, Tenebris looks at you. Uh, I, uh, wasn't actually going to eat her. Ah, uh, I would hope so. Really? That's a pity. He stares at you in disbelief. What? I'm joking. Oh. By the way, sorry for breaking into your home the other day. Don't really get how human rules work sometimes. Keith said I messed up. So you didn't know. Hope you don't mind me asking, but what are you exactly? You try to sound polite while asking. He opens his mouth to respond, but gets distracted by something behind you. You turn your head and notice someone wearing the same green apron as Tenebris is about to enter the shop. No time right now. Come by again at 3 if you want me to explain. You watch his facial features return to their original shape while the blue color fades from his skin. Seeing them switch is just about as hypnotizing as the first time. It's still hard to believe it's even possible. The other employee walks up to the two of you. The tag on the chest reads Melissa, and we're skipping ahead. Right, I do want to specifically get the Yandere ending, so I'm going to say you're not going to let this keep you away. We've already seen what happens here. Uh, suggest that you switch with Keith. Why don't you switch with Keith? Since you're done explaining and the crowd seems to be stressing you out. It looks like he's contemplating it for a moment, but his frown only deepens. I don't want to. I rarely get time outside the body. He's been out all day. You get a feeling you've struck a nerve. Uh, well, wait, apologize, insist. I, I, well, I will apologize. Sorry, just wanted help. His expression softens. It's fine. Sorry for snapping. I should probably just get home. You're right. The crowd is stressing me out. Oh, my explanation made sense. I think so. It was a lot. They'll still need time to think. He nods. You both make your way back, then once at a the park's exit, bid, bid each other farewell. And we're skipping ahead. Right, I want to go see Keith again for this date. You're currently getting ready for sit outing. I'm wondering what to wear. Skip. Uh, make sure you look nice. Skip. Thank him. Skip. Try something new. Skip. Uh, huh. Yep. Maybe I should name my plan. Skip ahead. Uh, anyway, why don't you tell me a little more about yourself? Me? Well, other than being passionate about plants, I also like to read. Really? What books do you read? Mystery, fantasy, and sometimes a bit of romance. You like romance? That's rare for a guy. Is it a bad thing? Oh, uh, well, not at all. It's just your preference. You think so? I am um, actually read it quite a lot. But I didn't know how it come. I don't know how it come across. I'm not that judgmental. Sorry. I'm probably just being used to being judged from it. I'm glad you aren't like that, though. What about you? Do you like reading? Uh, I love reading. I read from time to time. Yeah, I prefer to play visual novels instead of reading books. That read really my thing. I love reading. Really? What do you read? You tell him about your favorite genres and authors. He listens intently. If he recognizes names or titles, he perks up and comments on having read them or asks whether you'd recommend them to him. As the conversation fades off, Keith takes on a serious expression. He presses his lips together and looks to the side before fixating his gaze on you. Lion, could I ask you something? Uh, well, talk to you about something. What is it? I know the situation is strange and uncertain, the whole thing with me and Tenebris. Yeah, skip the night when we broke in. I was scared. I tried to reassure you that everything will be fine. To be honest, I don't know if I can guarantee that it was selfish of me to pretend Tenebris can be dangerous. I want to apologize. Ah, uh, well, I... he's right, it's not worth the risk, you're not gonna back out. Uh, well, I'm not gonna back out, no. I can handle it. I've decided I want to get to know you, skip. Uh, well, thank you. Skip. And I enjoy what I ordered. This enrages you. Oh, wait. That's right. Uh, the waitress actually gave him her, like, phone number. Um, okay. So, you can only get this if you have, like, enough points, uh, with Keith. And if you have enough Yandere points. There is a guide on how to actually get all these points, like, listed on the game page. So, if you guys do want to download it, it's, like, down there in the description. But, anyway. This enrages you. You freeze. You knew it. You knew she'd been check him out. That skank. Who does she think she is? Hitting on the guy who was clearly on a date with you. 
You grit your fist as your entire body tenses. Keith notices this. Ah, but don't worry. I really have no plans on using it. Here. He hands the piece of paper over to you. You can get rid of it yourself if you like. You stare down the piece of paper emptily, then your mouth twists into a sweet smile. Isn't he just perfect? So handsome. So charming. So sweet. You close your fists, crumpling the paper. Yes, you will get rid of it. Thank you. The two of you continue to chat as you leave the restaurant. You mimic throwing away the paper in a nearby bin, then quickly stuff it inside your pocket. Keith doesn't notice. You press a kiss against his cheek before bidding him farewell. He wants to walk you home, but you refuse. You need to stop by a friend's place, you tell him. He buys it. He is your newfound treasure, and you plan on making sure he stays yours. This restaurant must be a place he likes a lot, one he most likely visits. You'll make sure he is you'll make sure it is worthy of him. It's been a few days since your date with Keith. He sounds surprised but happy when you suggest a dinner date. He insists that you have it at his place so he can show off his cooking to you. Who are you to deny him that pleasure? The smile would not leave your face as you are waiting in front of his door. You made sure to dress up. Your heart is beating fiercely in your chest as it opens and Keith appears in the doorway. Good evening. I had just finished setting everything up. Come on in. His apartment looks very clean and tidy. The decor has the same air as Keith's usual fashion style. Smart. A little old-fashioned, cozy. You're not surprised to find how many books are filling up the shelves in the living room, or the amount of plants to be found nearly everywhere you look. The place looks really nice. It's very you. Oh, thank you. Food and drinks await you on the coffee table by the sofa. You both sit down. Did you make this all by yourself? Of course. I promised that I'd impress you with my cooking skills. You can't help but swoon. Your darling is so skilled, and he did this just for you. You may as well just melt on this couch. Aren't you the luckiest person in the world? You've succeeded. But you haven't even tasted it yet. I can already tell I love it, since you made it. To prove yourself, you grab a fork and try the food. You weren't wrong. It does taste good. You make this fact known with a satisfied hum. Told you. Keith laughs. It's the sweetest sound you've ever heard. You want to hear it more and more. You begin to chat while you eat. He tries to ask you about what you've done in the past few days, but you keep your answer short. Instead, you want to know about him. What has he been doing? What books has he been reading? Did anybody bother him? Does anybody else catch his eye? He's a little taken aback by all your questions, but he answers them patiently, with that lovely smell of him constantly present. You know, Keith, dear, I really wanted to see you, but I also want to talk to you about something. What is it? I never met someone quite like you. You make me restless, feverish. You make me feel like I'd be perfectly happy if you and I were the only people left in this world. You take his hand in yours. You watch his brows rise as your heart hammers in your chest. Nobody else will make me... Nobody else will be able to make me do the things you make me do. You reveal a small red box, which you plant in the middle of his palm. What is this? Open it. His free hand o hovers over the lid, trembling. His fingers curl around it and pry it open. Inside, a single tube rests on the white cushion that would have normally held jewelry. A few dark spots surround it. The waitress that gave you her number. I kept a little pot of her. It's a trophy. I wanted to prove my love for you and dispose of a nuisance at the same time. The trembling of his hands get worse. His shoulders begin to shake. A smile forms on his face until a wave of giggles escapes his lips. The grip he has on the box becomes so tight that his fingers turn pale. Keith? <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> the laughter becomes louder. Of course, of course it makes sense that this is what happened. He giggles and giggles. All he can do is stare, dumbfounded. Until it finally dies out, he closes the box and sets it down on the table. Ah, thank you, my dear. Did you make sure to hide her well? Of course. They'll never find her. Good. He caresses your cheek. You see relief in his gaze, but also sadness. Are you unhappy with the gift? No, my love. You have no idea what service you've done for me. I just wish you didn't need to. The nickname he uses causes your heart to skip a beat. It's nothing. I'll do it a million times if I have to. You rest your hand over his. I want to be with you. Me too. More than you can imagine. He leans in, where your lips meet. 
You feel like you're finally whole. It's soft, warm, comforting. His thumb rubs your cheek. You wrap your arms around him. Right, as much as I would love to take it further, I think we might as well stop it here, because uh, <laughs> that's going to go up on Patreon instead. So here, you break away from a kiss, but not before I give him one last peck. He smiles. You may as well be on Cloud 9 while she rots in hell. He leans back against the couch and brings you along with him. The way he looks at you with so much adoration is the greatest reward you've ever received, which you've ever wished for. Oh, but you still enjoyed ripping that pretty luscious hair off her scalp as she begged you to stop. I'm gonna stay over tonight, just for cuddles. I wanna be close to you. I love that. You sit, get, you sit together for some time, chatting, declaring a love for one another until it gets late and it's time to get everything tidied up. You want to help him clean everything up, but insist that you let him do it alone. You're a guest, he says. Isn't he so sweet? And to think, you've been, you could have been replaced by that skank, that poor excuse of a human, that rotting pile of bones left to be eaten by worms beneath the dirt. He offers you some of his clothes to sleep in. You're overjoyed. Everything smells like him, or the more specific product he uses. The clothes, the sheets on his bed, the blankets, the pillows. They smell like flowers and a hint of mint. You kill a hundred more people if this was your reward. You bathe in their blood and decorate the streets with their guts, just for a moment of tenderness with him. He smiles as he enters the bedroom. You find to find you already nestled in blankets on the bed. He's changed into a grey t shirt and pajama pants. I'm glad to see you've already made yourself comfortable. I'd be more comfortable if you joined me. Of course. Sorry to keep you waiting. He plops onto the bed beside you. You open up the cocoon of blankets you made for yourself and pull him in. He giggles in response, wrapping himself around you and nuzzling into your chest. Your heart thumps excitedly. You can probably hear it. You run your hand through his soft curls. You feel like you've won tonight. Bad end. Selfish. Anyway, that was Duality. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, the link to the game will be in the description below. I should probably let you all know that by going down any other route, basically, like, not saying that this enrages you, it takes you down the same, um, like, safe ends as I've shown you earlier in Tenebris' route. I'm pretty sure, like, more of the game is going to be released sometime in the future, but who knows, who knows. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. It's Lion. Signing off. Ciao.